I like to increase the value of my RuneScape bank with unconventional money-making methods. Unusual, undiscovered methods that you wouldn't expect to make you a pretty penny. With over 100 unusual money-making methods under my belt, I've got a good sense of what methods can make us some GP, and today is a great example of that. Some of the best unusual money-makers you're ever going to see, starting off with the infinite GP pouch. Yeah, this is now a thing. Recently, an in-game clue-seeking event was finally solved after 9 months, and the rewards are unusual, which fits perfectly for this series. By bringing these 28 items to this spot near the water altar south of Lumbridge and digging with your spade, you are told to go to the Varrock West basement. By heading to the gate and performing 17 different emotes in this order, you unlock the ability to enter behind the locked gates of the Varrock West basement, an area infamously known for having that juicy ruby ring that you can never get until now. If you search all of the chests on the west side of the room, you unlock the Robes of Ruin, a purely cosmetic set of robes. On the east side, however, you unlock one of the most random items ever, an infinite money bag. And yes, it's exactly what you think it is, a bag with an infinite amount of GP. All you have to do is withdraw GP from it and you can become a RuneScape billionaire. You just have to click a billion times because the most amount of GP you can withdraw from it is one. As long as you're consistently clicking, you're able to withdraw one GP every tick from the bag. Each tick is around 0.6 seconds, so as long as there isn't any server lag and you're on a world with good ping relative to your location, you can expect to withdraw around 5,900 GP per hour. Per day, 141,600 GP. Per week, about 1 million. Per month, a little less than 4 million, and per year, 47.5 million GP. So, if you were to do this for 21 years straight, you could become a RuneScape billionaire. I hope Jagex tracks who's taken the most amount of money from the bag because you just know that someone is going to have an absurd amount in a year or two. Our next method involves being served food in a way I didn't know existed. I did know about HelloFresh though, and so should you. HelloFresh delivers pre-portioned ingredients and easy to prepare recipes right to your door. If you're new to cooking or an experienced chef, preparing the recipes is fun, easy, and most importantly, delicious. Everyone should learn how to cook a meal, and HelloFresh is a great service to help you get started. Each week, you can choose between 40 recipes to try out and over 100 seasonal and convenience items. And with options for everyone and every lifestyle, anyone can take part. HelloFresh is cheaper than grocery shopping and takeout, and with its carefully portioned ingredients, you're cutting down on food waste, which means saving money and helping the planet. So if you're craving a sesame soy pork bowl or creamy Tuscan spaghetti and meatballs, I think it's time you check out HelloFresh. Use my link or go to hellofresh.com and use code POGSOUPJUN16 to get 16 free meals plus free shipping, a perfect offer to help you get started. Once you click, my description will live update to count up the purchases. Enjoy. Did you know that the five servants you can hire for your player-owned house can also serve you dinner? Rick serves you shrimp, the maid serves you stew, the cook serves you pineapple pizza, the butler some chocolate cake, and the demon butler serves you curry. The most expensive food is the pineapple pizza, which the cook serves you. All you need in your house is a dining room table. Just talk to the cook and ask her to serve you dinner. After about a 20 second wait, she'll return to the dining room and place one pineapple pizza on the table for you to take. One pineapple pizza is worth 700 GP. This is pretty much just clicking through a couple of dialogue options and getting handed 700 gold for free. But did you know that if you have other people in your house, more food gets served? Two people in your house gets you two pizzas, 1.4K. Four people in your house gets you four pizzas, 2.8K. Eight people in your house gets you eight pizzas, 5.6K worth of pizzas just like that. Unfortunately, the servant cannot bring you back more than 8 pizzas. I had 15 accounts in my house and was hoping that the servant would bring back 15 pizzas, but she only brought back 8. I even had 2 dining rooms just in case that was a cheeky way for her to bring back extra pizzas. It didn't work though. But, knowing that only clicking a few times and waiting for about 20 seconds can bring 8 pineapple pizzas worth 700 GP each, I think you know I had to try this for an entire hour. So that's exactly what I did. I logged in on 8 accounts, I brought them all to my POH, sat them down at the dining room table, and asked the cook to bring us a lot of pizza. Here's how the method worked. Whenever the cook finished placing the 8 pizzas on the table and returned to me, I would ask her to go make some more. Since it takes about 20 seconds for her to return, I would use that time to collect all of the pizzas off the table on my 8 accounts. By the time I had finished that, she would arrive back with 8 more pizzas and the process would repeat. If you're efficient, you can get an entire inventory of pineapple pizzas in 15 minutes. 
eight accounts with 28 pizzas is 224 pineapple pizzas, just like that. Then, you bank all of the pizzas on those accounts, return to your POH, and continue on. I slowed down a bit towards the end of the hour since my brain was truly beginning to hurt playing on 8 different accounts, but we still ended up with a solid 856 pineapple pizzas in 1 hour. We then promptly sold them on the GE for 593k. Now, it costs around 80k an hour to use the cook in your POH, so we are left with 513k as our final profit. Over half a million GP an hour, spawning some pineapple pizzas in our POH. Now, if we were doing this on just one account, you would make around 70k an hour. Not that great, but still unusual, which is exactly what the series is all about. I got a message from Snail telling me to check out this room full of Wallasalkis in the Waterbirth dungeon. Killing these things can apparently make you some decent GP. Now, everyone has seen these things before when heading down to the dungeon to the Dagonoth Kings, but have you ever thought about mass killing them in hopes of making some money? These slithering walruses actually drop some really cool items. Items you may have heard of, like the skeletal gloves and boots, and items you may have never heard of, like a fibula piece, a ribcage piece, and a skull piece. These items are used to create skeletal armor. They are dropped at a 1 in 64 drop rate from these things, and if we look at the prices, these could all add up to some nice profit. There's a room with 5 wall assaulties in the Waterbirth dungeon, and they're in a multi-combat area, which is perfect for setting up a cannon to kill them quickly. We'll also be using a special bow called the Venator Bow, which has a cool passive effect of one of your arrows bouncing off one enemy and hitting another, which means more damage, which means more kills per hour. So with our cannon, our Venator Bow, and some other range bonus boosting gear, we're all set to kill as many of these things as as possible. Soon enough, the drop started rolling in, a pair of skeletal boots, then a second pair, a fibula piece, a ribcage piece, a skull piece, skeletal gloves. The drops did not stop. The only other items I picked up were stackable items that were worth something, like blood, chaos, and death runes. I probably should have used prayer saving gear instead of carols, but I was still pretty happy with how many kills I was getting. After one hour, I had killed 402 Wallasalkis and received 27 of those special armor pieces. It's also worth mentioning that I got 140,000 ranged XP as well. Now, there was one thing that worried me about this method. Would these random items even sell? Looking at the daily trading volume of some of them, my hopes were not high. A skull piece, two trades a day. A ribcage piece, one trade a day. A fibula piece, zero trades a day. Not looking good. The skeletal boots and ribcage didn't sell for 5% under, but all six of the skull pieces did for 77k each. And the fibulas sold for 40k each, which was a huge relief. The skeletal boots eventually sold for 30k each, and the ribcage pieces for 11k each. I listed these skeletal gloves for 100k each, and after about 30 minutes, all of them had sold. Alongside the runes and that random Renar weed I got, that brings our total profit from this method to 1,486,000. 337 GP. We spent 580k on cannonballs, ancient essence, rune arrows, and potions, so subtract that from the final total, and we are left with 950,000 GP profit after one hour of killing Wallasalkis. Now this method solely comes down to whether or not the unique items you get actually sell. From my experience, they did, but that may not be the case for everybody. If you're going to do this, expect the items to sell over time for the prices you're looking for as opposed to instant selling. Pretty neat little method that involves some pretty unusual items. By the way, make sure to hit that subscribe button. We're super close to 300,000 and it would make me very happy. You guys want me happy, right? It seems like Puro Puro just has infinite ways to make money. We've already covered a bunch that work in this area, and Ahmed has another one for us. Over the course of the past few years, this area has received some quality of life changes that make it way easier to do certain things, especially for those pesky iron men. One of those changes was making the process of getting impling jars from Elnox Exchange a lot easier using the jar generator. If you bring three essence implings, two eclectic implings, and a nature impling to Elnok, you can purchase a jar generator generator. This jar generator lets you generate 33 impling jars, which you can take out of it just by spam clicking on it. And the best part, you can deposit these impling jars into Elnok's pockets, up to 1,000 of them. Another great change they made was Elnok accepting noted implings as payment, so you can just stack up a bunch of noted essence, eclectic and nature implings, buy jar generators, spam click it a bunch to take out the impling jars, deposit them with Elnok, buy a new jar generator, and repeat the process. This is a high intensity method since to be efficient, 
moment, you have to be constantly clicking, but the profit potential here is pretty crazy. Three Essence, two Eclectic, and one Nature Impling cost 27,756 GP to buy from the GE. And you get 33 Impling jars out of a jar generator. Those 33 jars can be sold for 37,191 GP. So you're looking at almost 10,000 GP profit every time you empty out one of these jar generators. With how quickly you're able to do it thanks to some of the updates here, I think we're looking at a solid method. I calculated that I would be able to empty out around 200 jar generators per hour. So I bought 600 Essence Implings, 400 Eclectic Implings, and 200 Nature Implings, which cost me 5.5 million GP. Quite the investment, but I knew I would be making guaranteed profit since Impling jars have a huge daily trading volume. After one hour with a very sore wrist, I had collected 6,591 Impling jars and sold them for a total of 7.43 million GP. So subtract the original 5.5 million we spent on the jars and in one hour, we profited 1.8 million GP. 1.8 million, a fantastic return. So good in fact that it slides into the top five methods of all time on the leaderboard. Is this a click intensive method? Yes. Do my eyes and hands hurt? Yes. But did I make some serious unusual profit? Yes. So we'll take it. Luke sent me a very interesting moneymaker on Discord. He said that this shop right here, owned by Arnold Lidspor, is a great place to make money, but not by buying the items he sells. He's a unique NPC because not only does he have a shop, but he also allows you to access your bank, which means he can unknown items for you, which is perfect for Ultimate Iron Man. His shop will also buy items from you for 55% of their value, so a lot of Ultimate Iron Men will sell bulk items to him to try and recoup some money off items they'll either never use or just have no need for. Luke is one of those Ultimate Iron Men who uses the shop for that purpose. He told me that he was doing Herblore here and sold all of these potions that he made to the shop. Some lucky guy came along and saw how cheap all of these potions were to buy from his shop and decided to take action and buy them all. As you can see, the potions are all worth way less than 30 GP from the shop, but you can sell them all for way more on the Grand Exchange. Because this is a popular shop to sell bulk items to, I decided to hop on at peak times on Sunday and do one entire world rotation. World 302 all the way to World 573 to see how many items I could find in this shop that I could buy for cheap and then sell for a profit on the Grand Exchange. It didn't take me long to find my first item, a stack of magic potions, 25 GP from the shop, 77 GP on the Grand Exchange. How about a stack of 7,000 lantern lenses? 7 GP in the shop, 17 GP on the Grand Exchange. How about another stack of 1,100 magic potions? Or this gold mine of 2,000 U logs? 16 GP in the shop, 307 GP on the Grand Exchange. That right there is almost 500K profit. 226 Menophyte Remedies, 11 GP in the shop, about 1,000 GP each on the GE. Sapphires, Emeralds, more magic potions, there was a lot of things to buy, and it was exciting to hop into a world to see if there was any special loot in the shop. After one hour, here's what I collected. Thousands of potions, lantern lenses, and U-logs, and hundreds of gems. In total, we spent 170k on these items. Everything sold on the Grand Exchange for 1,346,000 GP. Subtract the 170k, and we're left with 1.176 million GP. Over 1 million GP in an hour, just hopping around and buying items from a shop in Piscatoris. Not bad. Now this method fully depends on if you get lucky with the items you find. Those U-logs were an amazing find and were close to half of my profit. If I didn't find those, it would be a lot less. If you do this, you'll have good hours and you'll have bad hours, but money can always be made. A big shout out to all the Iron Men selling to this shop that makes this unusual method possible. I'm currently editing this part of the video and I went to go check Arnold's shop again for something and look at that, 2,000 sapphires just waiting to be bought. Every time I look through your suggestions for an unusual moneymaker, I always get reminded about how many unique methods are out there involving things I normally would never do. Arctic and JJME2 reminded me that there is an animal in this game called a razor-backed kebit. At a hunter level of 49, you can track and catch these kebits in the Piscatoris Hunter area. All you need with you is a noose wand, some stamina potions, and some rings of pursuit, which give you a 25% chance of revealing the entire track of a hunter creature. You'll also want to bring a chisel with you because every Every time you catch one of these kebits, you receive a guaranteed drop of a long kebit spike, worth 8.3k. But you don't want to sell this version of the spike. 
You first want to use your chisel on it, which in turn gives you some fletching XP and 6 long kebit bolts, worth around 1.9k each. This means that every time you catch one of these kebits and turn their spike into 6 bolts, you get 11.4 thousand GP. These long kebit bolts are used with the Hunter's Crossbow, which is a semi-popular weapon used in PvP due to its fast attack speed and fairly low cost. Because of this, these bolts have a decent daily volume, enough to make this method potentially viable long term. So with everything I needed in my inventory, I got to work catching these Razorback Kebits for an hour to see how many Kebit bolts I could make. The Rings of Pursuit make a big difference here, as it can save you minutes of time when tracking these things. Compared to the Impling method from earlier, this was a fairly relaxing method. I just filled up my inventory full of the Kebit spikes, and then chiseled them all into long Kebit bolts. Nice and easy. After one hour, I had caught 79 Razorbacked Kebits and turned all of their spikes into 474 Kebit bolts. I listed them on the Grand Exchange for 1.9k each, and while they didn't sell right away, I came back a couple of hours later to see that all of them had sold for a total of 898,704 GP, a little under 900k in one hour catching these kebits. As long as the hunter's crossbow is being used, these bolts will continue to sell on the GE. It won't be instant profit, but the money is there to be made. Who would have thought that these little guys could add so much GP to your pockets? Thanks for watching today's unusual money making video. If you have a money making method you'd like me to try out, send me a message on Discord or Twitter or leave it in the comment section below. I'm excited to see what you guys send my way. I'll see you all in the next one.